Today we're going to learn how to insert a Google API map inside our website, meaning that we're going to take the map from Google, you know, the Google Maps, and insert it inside our own website. So when we do that, it's going to look something like this, where we get a map, you can change, you know, the size of the map, mine is just from width to width, and we can go ahead and drag the map around, we can zoom in, we can zoom out, we can change the look of the map, we can change it back to, to just map. Uh, we should be able to do this inside our own website using Google's API map. So what we're going to do here to start with is I'm going to go ahead and start up a new document. So you guys should have a new document as well with a very basic HTML5 styling like the one we have here. Now one thing to point out, in order to get Google's API map working, you need to code HTML5 code, meaning that we need to have this tag up here in the beginning in order to get this working. Okay. Now the second thing we need to do is we need to make sure we have a Google's API guideline open inside the browser. And I'm going to go ahead and leave a link in the description so you guys can actually find it. But the reason I want you guys to open this up is because there's a lot of good references in here in case you guys need to learn something else about Google's API map. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and go through the guideline, not you know directly from the website because that would be kind of boring, but I'm going to show you guys quickly how to set up the Google API map. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and go back inside my coding program and I'm going to go ahead and start up some styling. Now, one thing that's important to know about Google Maps when you want to insert it inside our website is that we have to use a div that has an ID as a map. So inside my body tag, I'm going to go ahead and create a div like so. I'm going to go ahead and give this div an ID as map like so. And once we've done that, we can actually go ahead and style the div. Now, the first thing we need to do is decide how long and how tall should this map be. So I'm going to go ahead and just style it directly inside my, my front page document here. I'm not going to insert it into a external style sheet. You guys can do that if you want to. I'm just going to go ahead and style it up here in my header. Now, inside the style tags, I'm going to go ahead and say we have an ID called map. Open up the brackets, or at least the curly brackets. And then inside of here, I'm going to go ahead and say it should have a height of maybe 500 pixels. Then I'm going to go ahead and give it a width as 100%. Now you guys can give it a fixed amount if you guys want to. I'm just going to go ahead and make it go from left to right side of the browser. So I'm going to say 100%. Now one thing we need to do as well is since we don't have any kind of reset style sheet or anything going on here, we need to eliminate all paddings or margins inside the browser, at least the default ones we have uh, since we haven't removed them yet. So I'm going to say star, which means that we're styling everything inside the website curly brackets, margin should be zero, and then padding should be zero as well. So once we have the styling done, we can actually go ahead and go back down to the div, and we can actually go ahead and close it here because we don't actually need to put anything inside the div. And what we can do here is we need to go ahead and open up a bit of JavaScript code because this API map that we're inserting needs to have some JavaScript code in order to work. Now, I know we haven't talked about JavaScript yet, but I'm just going to go ahead and make this really simple so it's not something that's, you know, that flies over your head and you just don't understand it. I'm going to go ahead and take this step by step and just explain what we're going to code here. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a script tag, which is something we do each time we need to insert JavaScript inside our website. So JavaScript code has to go inside a pair of script tags. So I'm going to go ahead and go inside my script tags. And in here, we're going to create a function. Now, I know we haven't talked about functions yet, but basically this is something that we can activate once something happens inside the website. Now, in this case, it's just going to happen straight away. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and write function. We're going to write space, and then we need to call this function something. We're going to call it init map with a big M, which means that we initialize the map, parentheses, curly brackets. And then inside this function is where we start writing in how the map should function. For example, you know where the location is when we want to put the marker that we usually have inside Google Maps because we need to tell them where we are inside the map. Otherwise, it wouldn't really make sense to have a map inside our website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a variable by writing var. Again, we haven't talked about variables because this is not a JavaScript series. If you guys are interested in learning this sort of thing, you guys can check out my JavaScript series and how to you know, write JavaScript. So we have a variable, which means that we have a piece of data we need to set equal to something. I'm going to go ahead and call this one location, because why not? We can call whatever we want. I'm going to set it equal to 
a latitude and longitude inside, you know, just the typical latitude and longitude uh, coordinates that we can find inside the web. So I'm going to say curly brackets. And then inside the curly brackets, I'm going to start with the latitude. So I'm going to write lat colon minus 25 punctuation 363. Three. And again, this is something you can find online. I'm going to show you guys a link uh, so you can find your specific location. I'm going to say comma. I'm going to say LNG, which stands for longitude. Then we're going to write colon 131 punctuation 044. So now we have these numbers here. And again, like I said, we can find these online. Now, after we have the curly brackets, we need to make sure we have a semicolon to end off this line of code. And just to show you guys what I'm talking about here, if I were to go inside my browser here and find this website here, then I'm going to leave a link for you guys in the description. As you guys can see, if I want to find, for example, London, like so, click find, you guys can see we get a longitude and a latitude. And this is the numbers that I use inside the code in order to find out where I am inside, you know, the world. So now what we need to do is we need to go inside our code again. And after we decide the location, which we have right here inside, you know, a variable, we can go ahead and write that we want to start up a new Google map and we need to insert it inside this div we have up here. So I'm going to go inside my code, again, inside the script text, inside the function, I'm going to create another variable. I'm going to call this one map. I'm going to go ahead and set it equal to new space Google dot maps dot map with a big M because we need to refer to something called the method, which means that we need to add parentheses afterwards. Then inside the parentheses, we're going to go ahead and say we have a document, which is the one we have open right here dot get element by ID parentheses which means that we're going to go ahead and get some kind of element inside our website using the ID of whatever the element is. In this case, it's called map, which we have right here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy what we have here. I'm going to insert it inside the parentheses you created just here. Now, before the final parentheses you created here, I'm going to go ahead and say comma. I'm going to say curly brackets. I'm just going to move this down in the next line to make this easier. And inside of here, we're going to go ahead and say we have something called zoom which is going to be how much we want to zoom in on the map when the web page is loaded, when the user enters your website. So we're going to go ahead and set this one to, for example, four, which is also taken from the example inside the Google map guideline. I'm going to say comma because we need to add a second piece of data in here. So underneath it, I'm going to go ahead and say center colon space. And then we need to write the name of the variable we created up here called location because we want to center the map on this location here once the map has been loaded inside the website. So once we have this, we need to go down to the final parentheses down here and write semicolon to make sure we end off this line of code here. So once we have this, we basically have a map and we can actually go ahead and load up the map inside the browser once we insert a key inside this because inside Google, when we want to use the Google Maps, we need to have permission to use the map. So we need to go inside Google's website, you know, the, the guideline in here. And as you guys can see, it says get a key inside the menu bar here. So I'm going to say get a key. Once we go in here, it says some information regarding the keys, such as if you want to get the free one, you can have a limit of 25,000 visits per day or per hour. I don't quite remember it inside your website. But for now, the free one can suffice with whatever need we have. So I'm just going to go ahead and click get a key. And once we do that, we can actually go ahead and create the name for our project here. I'm just going to say tutorial. You guys can call whatever you want. Whoops, that was spelled incorrect, like so. And I can go ahead and say create and enable API. So once we do this, it's going to go ahead and load up a key for us to use inside our code. And we're going to go ahead and keep this key because we need to use it in order to actually get the Google Maps activated inside our website. So once it's loaded, which it should be in a few seconds, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and copy this key we have here and paste it inside my code. And for now, I'm just going to go ahead and paste it down here because we don't actually need to have it here, but we need to have it ready for when we do actually insert the line of code where we need to use the key. So we need to do one more thing here. We need to go underneath the script we created and create a second script. And this script is going to be the one that actually allow for us to use the Google Maps inside our website. So I'm going to go inside the script tag, inside the first one at least, and I'm going to go and say space async space 
defer or defer space source which is equal to double quotes and then inside of here we're going to go and write in the address to google's api so we're going to say https colon forward slash forward slash maps dot google apis dot com forward slash maps forward slash js question mark key is equal to and then we need to paste in the key we just got from the website so i'm just going to go ahead and take it here copy it delete it because we don't need it anymore and insert it right after the equal sign so now that we have the key inserted we need to finish off the code by writing and callback is equal to init map with a big m okay so i did actually cut the video here because i realized we've got to insert one word inside the link here right after maps when we say forward slash we need to write api forward slash and then js question mark so now that we have this we can actually go ahead and save it go inside our browser refresh and as you guys can see we now get a map now this map works perfectly fine. We can zoom in, we can zoom out using the mouse control if you want to, we can zoom in using the buttons here. But right now we don't actually have a pointer or like a marker that says where in the world we are. So going inside our code again, we're gonna go ahead and include that. So inside the script we have up here, we're gonna go ahead and go underneath the last code we just wrote and we're gonna go ahead and create another variable. We're gonna call this one marker. I'm gonna set it equal to new Google dot maps dot marker with a big m parentheses and then inside the parentheses we're going to say curly brackets i'm going to go ahead and just move it down to the next line so we get the closing curly bracket and the closing parentheses on the line below here and inside of here we're going to go ahead and include two pieces of data first of all the position like so which is going to refer to the location we have up here because it makes sense to just include the location that we actually decide down here inside the same place where the marker is gonna be. So I'm gonna say location. By the way, I don't think I explained this one up here because this one up here is a center, just basically says where the map needs to be centered once we load the website. So right now, as you guys can see, the latitude and longitude in my case is Australia. So what we can do here is we can actually go ahead and set the marker in the same location as Australia. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, we have another piece of data, which is going to be map, which is going to refer to the map you have up here. And we want to tell that this is a map. So now that we have this, we can actually go ahead and close off the code we have down here with a semicolon, and then we can go ahead and reload the map. And as you guys can see, we now have a pointer that we can actually, you know, zoom in on so we know where exactly we want the user to, to find us. So this is basically how we insert a Google API map. And again, we can do all sorts of things and again, we can actually insert this map wherever we want inside our website. I just decided to just insert inside an empty browser. So you guys can go ahead and take the code and just use it for whatever purpose you have, for example, your own websites, if you want to. So if you guys enjoyed, I'll see you guys next time.